So I've often been asked, what do I do with all the mowers that I find for free? And if you hadn't guessed it, I can't keep them all. Although I have kept some, most need to find a good home. However, I don't always get them fixed before the end of that mowing season. That means some of them will have to go into storage. That way I can then bring them out the next season and sell them then. But how does that process go? And more importantly, was it worth all the effort? In today's video, we're going to be looking at a very small sample of mowers from my collection and the problem is that they just came out of storage and I need to get them ready, that way they can be sold. Now I do have a lot more mowers in storage, but as a policy of mine, I try not to flood the market otherwise it could affect the prices. And besides that, if I had several mowers for sale at any one time, it makes trying to sell them a bit more complicated due to time constraints. So for each mower, I'll check and see if there's any oil in them, add some if needed, and the same goes for the gasoline, and then we'll check for any leaks from the carb. After that, we'll then start up each one and test whether or not it'll start when the engine's hot. And then finally, we'll go over what all was done to the mower, and then I'll tell you how well the sale went. So our very first mower is this very basic Yard Machines 20 inch push mower. Now these mowers always surprise me because although these are not well equipped, most seem to understand what these are good for. Mostly used for small flat yards or as cut in mowers, these are easy to use because they don't weigh anything at all. Now we started this project by giving it a very needed full cleaning from top to bottom, sharpened the blade and then started servicing the engine. Now surprisingly, this carb did not need to be cleaned or serviced, however the same couldn't be said about the engine, which needed a valve adjustment because it was tough to start when hot. I also have this feeling that they made these smaller engines tougher to change the oil since changing and even checking the oil is harder to do because of a lack of a fill tube. Whatever you do, just be very careful and try not to overfill the engine with oil, which is tough to do since these dipsticks are really tough to read. So the next part is the part you need to be very careful about. Now depending upon how you put the mower up for storage, the float in the carb that helps to control fuel flow could be stuck. And to be certain you don't have an issue, take off the air filter to get a good view of the carb's inlet. Then you'll only put a couple of ounces of gasoline into the tank. Now doing it this way will keep you from losing too much gasoline if a leak's going to happen. And by the looks of things, this carb is not going to leak, at least for right now, but we can check it again later on. I'll then add more gasoline to the tank, that way we can start it up and let it run and find out if it'll start when hot. So I'm going to let it run for about 5 minutes to get the mower close to normal operating temperature, but you can let it run for as long as you want. And if you're going to let it run for a long time, well, you might as well mow your yard with it then. Now, I'm not sure why, but some would say five minutes is not long enough, but that's just what works out for me. You can make your own choice as to what works best for you. So it's been running for about five minutes, and we'll give it a couple of seconds, then we'll try and start it up. Now, if you want to, you don't have to wait this long, just so long as it stops is all. And just like in the repair video, it started right back up, which didn't happen in the first part of the video and required a valve adjustment to fix. So how did this project turn out? Well, this one was one of the ideal ones. The lawnmower was free, no parts were replaced, only cleaned and serviced, meaning the $100 I asked for and sold it at was all profit. I wish all of them were like this one, but wishful thinking only leads to a lot of thinking and no results. The next mower out of storage is this very rare garden line mower sold here in the states at Aldi food stores. Now I didn't know what to make of it when I first saw it, but after taking a look around, to be honest I really liked what I saw. The build quality was surprisingly good and the best part were the ball bearing wheels which is something you don't get in a budget mower. Now the only other good thing that I can say about it was that at least it had a reputable engine on it versus a no name brand. Now of course, this mower required a full cleaning just like most of my other projects, however this one wasn't as bad as the last one you just saw. The blade did need to be sharpened, but luckily I didn't need to replace it, which really helps out. So hopefully you know the drill by now. Check the oil, fill the oil if needed, and add the gasoline, and check for leaks from the carb, and add more gasoline, and then we're going to try and start it. Let it run for a bit, and then see if it'll start back up. 
pretty routine stuff, just the way I like it. Now, I don't mind going off script once in a while because it keeps things refreshing, but when it does go off script, it means something really terrible has happened, and that's when the critical thinking comes in, which is not something most want to deal with. So what if you added the gasoline to the fuel tank and it starts to leak from the carb? What I would do would be to tilt the mower back, which will then lift the front end of the mower up and hopefully keep any more gasoline from leaking from the carb. After that, you can then decide on how to deal with that very situation. Now for me, I would siphon what little fuel I could from the tank and then proceed to take the carb off and find out why the float was stuck in the carb. Now there is one more thing I need to do to this mower before I sell it, and that is to make this handle for the height adjustment for the deck not feel like a cactus. So as you can tell, it looks like some puppy was using it as a chew toy, but after a minute with the torch, it's now a lot easier to use. Now there were a couple of different ways to fix this, but none of them were as satisfying as using fire. Now to be completely honest, I kind of wanted to keep this mower for my collection and the reason why was because at the time, this was the only example I'd ever seen. But I finally came to my senses and decided I'd rather take the money and get my valuable space back instead. Now it's not a bad mower, but it's just not worth that much to me and it'd be worth more to someone else who needs one. So it's been 5 minutes, let's see if it'll have any problems starting back up when hot. This project was once again one of those ideal ones, a good cleaning and servicing with no parts needed, which although seems boring, turns out to be really good for your wallet. So how did this project turn out then? Well, if you hadn't guessed it, it turned out really well. There was no cost for this mower, there were no parts to be replaced, and besides some time, the asking price of $100 turned into all profit, which is fantastic, but what happens when things don't go according to plan? So this mower is the problem mower that at first glance looks to be yet another easy clean and service and sell, but I'm here to tell you that things aren't always that easy. Now, while I go through my checklist, I'm going to tell you the real story about this mower. So if you watch this series, you're going to remember that this was the mower with the fuel tank that had the cypress leaves in it. Well, after cleaning what I could, I failed to properly clean the fuel tank and that left tiny particles of organic matter in the tank that eventually made their way into the rest of the fuel system. Now that may not sound like a big deal, but it turns out to be very huge in fact. What was happening was that these tiny particles started to interfere with the needle and seat and caused the slowest fuel leak I'd ever seen. In fact, the leak was so slow it didn't even leak on the mowing deck, but instead it slowly made its way into the engine and ended up polluting the oiling system. The reason I know this is because while I had the mower, I noticed that the gasoline in the fuel tank was slowly disappearing and yet the oil level kept rising, which is not normal. And after some testing, I was finally able to figure out what was really going on. Now I tried to clean the carb again, and that's when I found these tiny particles in the bowl of the carb. You would think that it would then take the entire fuel system apart and do an intensive cleaning tank included, but it still kept happening. That's when I had enough, and I spent too much time taking it apart and cleaning it that doing it again would have not guaranteed any sort of success. Instead, I did what I should have done from the beginning, which was to clean the fuel tank, install an inline paper fuel filter, not a screen one, and to finish it off, I installed a new carb as well. I was done putting time into a project that I would never get back, and my advice to anyone would be to do the same thing. So unfortunately this one got me. I had to work on it at least three times and had to basically buy and install some new parts to stop the cycle. Now if you are determined not to spend any money on a project but would rather spend a lot of time on it, be my guest, but I'd rather have my time back. In my case, I would take $20 less for the asking price and save a couple of hours and one less headache. So what's your guess as to whether or not this engine's gonna start back up? If you guessed that it would, well, you'd be right. So this project was not a simple jet cleaning and there was a lot more going on there that unfortunately took trial and error to figure out. But after all the changes were made, it didn't leak anymore and I was confident about selling it. So how did this one turn out? Well, this mower didn't cost anything, however, I did have to replace the carb at a cost of $15. 
I also had to replace the air filter at a cost of roughly $2. Now, I'm not going to include the fuel filter because it was something I already had from a different kit, but it'd only be a dollar anyway. Okay, so here's the deal. If I had decided the day that I fixed it to sell it, someone would have bought it not knowing that there was a very slow fuel leak that was getting into the oil. And as time went on, more and more fuel would have mixed with the oil, making it less of a lubricant and more of a fuel. And potentially would cause the engine to lock up in a year or two, or depending upon how often they used it. Which is why sometimes holding back on a sale can be very beneficial, not only to them, but to your reputation as well. Basically, I think I made the right choice, and I hope you see it the same way too. Now, I'm not saying that I'm a saint, but I do at least want to try my best to sell something that I wouldn't mind keeping and using myself either. And not looking at something that I'm trying to just get rid of. Now, as for these mowers, at the time of this video's release, all have been bought by some lucky individuals who will hopefully take care of them, but if they don't, I'm sure I might see one of these three someday again, but hopefully not too soon. So my question is, do you think you might take on the challenge of finding a free mower, trying to fix it and possibly either sell it or keep it for yourself? Or would you rather not bother with such a trivial thing and just buy a new or used mower instead? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects. And I hope to see you in the next video.